Hello everyone, welcome to BioTales. Today we are going to talk about Yersiniosis. Yersiniosis is an infection. Most often people get this infection when they eat pork that's raw or uncooked. One can also get it from other animals such as rodents, cows, sheep, rabbits and horses. Less commonly, dogs and cats can spread the bacteria too. Young children are more likely to get Yersiniosis. Center of Disease Control estimates Yersinia enterocolitica causes almost 117,000 illnesses, 640 hospitalization, and 35 deaths in the United States every year. Children are infected more often than adults and the infection is more common in the winter. Now we see what causes Yersiniosis. Yersiniosis is caused by the bacteria called Yersinia enterocolitica. The bacteria that cause Yersiniosis can infect humans, cats, dogs, pigs, cattle, and goats. People get Yersiniosis by eating or touching food or drink that's infected with bacteria. A baby can get it if a caregiver handles infected food without cleaning their hands before touching the baby's toys, mortals, or pacifiers. Now we see what are the symptoms of Yersiniosis. The symptoms of Yersiniosis can vary depending on the age of the person infected. In young children, common symptoms are fever, abdominal pain, and diarrhea, which is often bloody. Symptoms in older children and adults may include fever, pain on the right side of abdomen, and may be confused with appendicitis. Symptoms typically develop 4 to 7 days after exposure and may last 1 to 3 weeks or longer. Complications are rare and can include skin rash, joint pains, or spread of bacteria to the bloodstream. Remember that you are contagious while you have diarrhea and up to the 3 months after diarrhea has stopped. That means you can spread the infection to others if they come into contact with your feces. Take extra care to wash your hands to avoid spreading the infection and making others sick. Now we see the pathogenesis of this disease. Yersinia enterocolitica is a bacterium that causes a disease called Yersiniosis. It spread through contaminated food or water and affects the intestinal tract, particularly the distal small intestine and proximal colon. Here are the steps of how it causes infection. The first step is ingestion. The bacteria are ingested through contaminated food or water. The second step is colonization. The bacteria colonize the intestinal tract, particularly the distal small intestine and proximal colon. The third step is attachment. The bacteria attach to and penetrate the mucus barrier overlying the mucosal epithelial cells. The fourth step is adherence. The bacteria adhere to intestinal cell, preferentially binding to and penetrating M cells of hair's patches. The fifth step is internalization. The bacteria are internalized by phagocytes and transported across the epithelial barrier. The sixth step is replication. The bacteria replicate in native murine macrophages and form microabscesses in various organs such as PPs, also called pear patches, MLNs, also called mesenteric lymph node, the spleen, and liver. The seventh step is dissemination. The bacteria can disseminate via the, via the bloodstream to the liver and spleen. The air step is resistance. Within these lesions, the bacteria form microcolonies and appear to be resistant to phagocytosis by macrophages and neutrophils. In summary, Yersinia enterocolitica causes infection by colonizing the intestinal tract, attaching and penetrating the mucus barrier, and replicating within macrophages, forming microabscesses in various organs. Now we see how Yersiniosis can be diagnosed. Yersiniosis is usually diagnosed by detecting the organism in the stool or feces of an infected person. Many laboratories do not routinely test for Yersinia, so it is important to notify the laboratory personnel when Yersiniosis is suspected so that special tests can be done. The organism can also be recovered from other sites including throat, lymph nodes, joint fluid, urine, bile, and blood. 
Most diagnoses of Yersiniosis are made via ELISA immunoassay testing. However, in locations without access to this form of testing, traditional bacterial cultures may be created, then they are tested biochemically. Now we see that how Yersiniosis can be treated. Most of the time, Yersiniosis gets better without treatment from provider. The body gets rid of bacteria, but it can take several weeks for symptoms to go away completely. Yersiniosis usually goes away on its own without antibiotic treatment. However, antibiotic may be used to treat more severe or complicated infections. Treatment for gastroenteritis due to Yersinia and pterocolitica typically requires only symptomatic treatment of diarrhea with common antidiarrheal drugs. Severe infection with systematic involvement, sepsis of bacteria, often required aggressive antibiotic therapy. The drug of choice are doxycycline and aminoglycoside. Alternatives include cefotaxime, fluoroquinolones, cotrimexazole. Standard antibiotics such as penicillin are often ineffective due to the production of beta-lactamase enzymes by Yersinia species. Let's discuss that who might get Yersiniosis. Anyone can get Yersiniosis but it is more common in children than adults. One may ingest a bacteria by drinking milk or water that's contaminated with bacteria. Eating food that's contaminated most often raw or, or undercooked pork. Handling the feces of a person or animal that has the infection. Preparing raw pork such as chitlins that is a food made from pig intestine and touching mouth before washing your hands. One can also spread the bacteria to others if you touch them or their belongings after preparing uncooked pork. Touching a surface or an object contaminated with Yersinia and Terocolitica bacteria and then putting your hands in your mouth. Now we see that how this infection can be prevented. You can lower the risk of Yersiniosis by avoiding unpasteurized product. Only eat and drink pasteurized milk ice cream and cheese. Pasteurized products are safe to consume because they have been through a process that kills most bacteria. Being careful with animal waste. Dispose of animal feces in separate sealed garbage container. Always wash your hand thoroughly after handling animal waste. Cooking food properly. Never eat raw pork or other type of raw meat. Always cook food to save internal temperature and use a food thermometer to make sure it's cooked enough. Preventing Cross contamination. When preparing food, use a separate cutting board for meat and other products. Keep raw meat away from other food. Taking extra precaution while preparing chitlin. When preparing chitlin, avoid touching anything until you have washed your hands thoroughly and scrubbed under your fingernails. Don't touch kid or their belonging while preparing food. When you're done, use a bleach solution to clean all surfaces, spots, and utensils. Let the bleach sit for several minutes before cleaning it off with paper towels. Always wash your hand after going to the bathroom, changing diapers, or playing with an animal. Wash your hands before eating, cooking, or touching a child's bottle or pacifier, especially if you have handled raw meat. That was all about your seniosis. If you like our video, please subscribe to our channel and click on bell icon. Thank you.